Madam Speaker, I rise today to speak about the Equality Act. First and foremost, I must begin by saying that I believe the LGBTQ community is a critical part of the fabric of our country. They are deserving of our unequivocal love and respect, and their contributions to my home state of Utah are utterly invaluable. As the mayor of Provo, I prioritized inclusion and love and sought to ensure my administration did everything possible to recognize the intrinsic value of all of our citizens, including our LGBTQ community. I fought hard against discrimination and was grateful for my associations with organizations like Provo Pride, Equality Utah, Encircle, and others who I was honored to stand with to ensure that our city motto of welcome home extended to everyone. Perhaps even more important than that, I am grateful for the association and relationships of my life that have helped me better understand the experiences of the LGBTQ community and who have been patient with me, a conservative Utah boy raised in the 60s, who took longer than I am proud of to gain empathy for this important issue. Again, I say, I'm incredibly grateful for the contribution of the LGBTQ community and will always stand with them in respect and support. With the Equality Act, we face a unique challenge, balancing the needed protections against discrimination with the importance of protecting religious liberty, which is one of the fundamental rights enshrined at the foundation of our nation. I believe this compromise is possible because I've seen it before in my home state with historic legislation called the Utah Compromise that effectively balanced the absolute rights of both LGBTQ individuals as human beings and religious institutions protected by the First Amendment. The Equality Act fails to strike that balance. Instead, these two interests are treated as zero-sum games with no good faith effort put forth for both sides to win. This bill would end long-standing religious liberties under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, a historic bipartisan legislative victory fought for by current Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, my own Utah mentor, Orrin Hatch, a Republican, and liberal icon, Ted Kennedy. It was also signed into law by Democrat Bill Clinton. I've introduced common sense amendments that would help achieve this critical balance of protection for both maintaining the standards against discrimination and religious freedom. But I'm frustrated that House Democratic leaders have decided there will not be any consideration or even debate of amendments to the Equality Act. Instead, they've established a model of legislative gaslighting. In this case, they are taking issues where broad bipartisan agreement is possible and taking the debate right off the table on issue after issue, whether it be climate change, violence against women, and now the Equality Act. They disregard willing partners such as myself standing here hoping to work with them and instead prefer to pass party line bills that won't go anywhere so they have issues to campaign on. If my colleagues on the other side of the aisle truly want to achieve progress on this issue, I hope they'll recognize that they have a willing partner in me. But they must be willing to work together to legislate and make room to protect both religious liberty and the LGBTQ community, exploiting yet another group in order to pass a campaign message bill along parties' lines is not in harmony with this body. I hope they'll hear me today and change course before we vote on this bill. Madam Speaker, I yield